Something else that we've already talked about um, are cycling of matter. And we talked about this way back in the beginning of the year when we were doing um, organic molecules and talking about um, schnapps, right? The six elements that are most abundant in living organisms. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Good refresher right there. Um, but all of these things, these atoms okay, that make up molecules, unlike energy, okay, which kind of gets lost as heat, remember only 10% um, gets passed on from one trophic level to the next, matter has to be cycled. Okay. So it might change form, but you know the carbon atoms that make up you have been on planet Earth for almost 5 billion years. Um, and same thing with all the other atoms. So that's pretty crazy. So let's do a quick refresher of the three major cycles. We talked about the water cycle. You've talked about the water cycle many times, um, but one of the things we focused on was the new piece of information, um, which was transpiration right here. Remember, transpiration is the basically evaporation of water from plants. So that's how very tall redwood trees are able to get water all the way up to the leaves where it will be used for photosynthesis, for example. Um, because um, water molecules are polar, which comes down to their structure. Okay, So that means there's an attraction between the slightly negative oxygen and the slightly positive hydrogen atoms on two different water molecules, so they're attracted to one another. So that means water molecules are cohesive. They like to stick together, and they're also adhesive. They stick to other things that are have a slight charge. So when water, um, when transpiration happens and water molecules evaporate from the tree, it pulls water um, all the way up from the roots of that tree um, through capillary action. So that's what we talk, focused on with the water cycle. We talked about the carbon cycle, and we dealt with the carbon cycle a lot this year. Um, one of the major parts, well, carbon, first of all, um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is a very important greenhouse gas. And we're going to talk more about that um, this week. Um, so too much carbon dioxide can lead to climate change, but we need carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It keeps the temperature um, warm enough to support life. So we talked about photosynthesis, which takes in carbon dioxide, um, produces sugar molecules, okay, glucose. Remember using carbon dioxide and water and sunlight. Okay, glucose can be produced and then organisms, organisms can convert that glucose into all sorts of other things too. Then when, you know, for exa this example, the cow eats the flour, then we get consumption. Okay, so thinking about food webs, not only is energy transferred from one organism to another, but also actual molecules. And then all organisms, including plants, including animals, go through respiration, cellular respiration, which produces carbon dioxide as a waste product. So that comes back out. Um, going back to carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas, two major causes of an increase in carbon dioxide, um, particularly in the past 50 years. Okay, so it's increased. Um, combustion, the burning of fossil fuels, okay? coal, oil, and natural gas, those are our fossil fuels. Um, and... You know, coal we use primarily for electricity, oil we use for transportation, also to make a whole bunch of different things, natural gas, um, often used as a heating source. Okay. Three quick examples. So combustion of fossil fuels, and the other one is deforestation. Okay. When we cut down trees, we're removing a big carbon sink because trees take in so much carbon dioxide. Um, also, a lot of times those trees are cut down to make um, room for cattle to graze or to grow different crops that don't take as, in as much carbon dioxide. So the trees, they just want to get rid of them really quickly. They burn them, and that just releases more carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. The other cycle that we talked about was the nitrogen cycle. Now, nitrogen makes up 78% of the atmosphere, but it's unusable in that form. Unlike oxygen, for example, we can't just take in nitrogen gas from the atmosphere. Plants can't either. So we rely on these very, very important nitrogen-fixing bacteria. They are able to 
um, break apart the nitrogen atoms and ni atmospheric nitrogen and make it into a usable form. Um, these nitrogen-fixing bacteria are typically found in the soil. Some live in a mutualistic relationship with roots of plants that are called legumes. Legumes are things like peanuts and beans, soy, etc. Um, so legumes are able to get lots of nitrogen from the nitrogen-fixing bacteria, so they're able to make lots of proteins and amino acids. Remember, amino acids contain a nitrogen group, um, and those amino acids are used to make proteins, building blocks, so that's why peanut butter is a good source of protein. Soy is a good source of protein. Beans are a good source of proteins. They're all legumes. Um, one of the things that we're doing to affect the nitrogen cycle is using chemical fertilizers. And chemical fertilizers just add to the nitrogen, and when you get too much nitrogen in water, that can cause these algal blooms, which can, act, which can actually be really bad because it can block sunlight for other plants. And then it, even though oxygen levels will increase briefly, then they'll decrease. Um, and you need oxygen and water for animals to live. So... Nitrogen cycle. If you only remember one thing about the nitrogen cycle, remember these nitrogen-fixing bacteria. They are responsible for converting the nitrogen gas into a usable form that other organisms can then use.